Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how to create a visibility controller for your rigged characters. Before we get started, I'd just like to wish a happy birthday to Zach from CGBoost.com. To celebrate his birthday, he's running a big 30% discount on all the CGBoost.com courses using the code HBD21. So happy birthday, Zach, and let's jump into the tutorial. When you are working on a complex character like this one from Noara, Displaying all the limbs and equipment of the character brings a lot of noise and it's super handy to be able to hide some part of the character to focus on the motion of specific features. As an example, I will use the Trident character from my animation course Alive and I will show you how to build the mechanism to hide the arms, the legs, the torso, but also the weapons of the character. Here I am in Blender with my character rig. It's made of an armature and separated object for the different weapons and the body. To achieve the body masking, we are going to use a mask modifier. And here is what you need to know about it. I will add a mask modifier to Blender's default cube. If your mesh object doesn't have any vertex group, it will disappear. By clicking the invert option, it will reappear. We can hide and hide a part of the mesh by using vertex group. I will head over the mesh data of our mesh object and I will create a new vertex group. I will first select a few vertices, then I will click the plus icon here. I will call this mask and I will assign the vertices to this group. Once you add any vertex group to your mesh, the mask modifier won't work anymore. Even if I click the invert option. So I will now source the vertex group and you can see that the vertices not included in the vertex group has disappeared. If I click the invert option, it will invert the effect. If I hide the modifier in the viewport, it won't be applied anymore. One important thing you need to pay attention to is whether the mask modifier is renderable or not. By default, it is. We have the little camera option. So even if it's deactivated in the 3D viewport, as I will render the cube, a part of it will disappear. So we will need to pay extra attention to those two different options of the modifier or in the outliner regarding the different object and mask modifier we are going to use. This method is universal, you can use it on your own character. I've jumped into edit mode pressing tab and now I will go in the mesh data properties of my character. Here I already have a bunch of vertex groups that correspond to the deforming group for the armature and I will click the plus icon to add a new group that I will call mask arms. If you want you can create a mask for the left arm, the right arm, half of your character etc. Just create as many masks as you want. To quickly isolate the arms, I will select this loop. Then I will select the same loop on the other side of the character. And then I will assign them to the mask arms group. Now the little trick to quickly select the other part of the arm is to switch to vertex selection mode. Then press H to hide those vertices and now the arms are separated. You can select them with L to select the linked vertices and assign them to the vertex group. I will repeat the process on the legs. Select a loop on each leg. Assign this loop to a newly created vertex group called mask legs. Then I will hide those loops that will allow me to select the linked vertices of the legs and assign them to the vertex group. Then as before, I just need to hide them, select the leg with L and then assign the legs. I will also create a vertex group for the torso. Let's now rig the mask. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code P2Design to get 10% off on any of the courses. The first step now is to add a mask modifier to our character. I will call it mask arms 
and in the vertex group I will source the mask arms vertex group. I will invert the result so that we only mask the arms. Using the rig we are going to trigger the viewport visibility of the mask. As explained before, don't forget to disable the renderability of the mask. Now to accelerate a bit our workflow, we can click the drop down menu and simply duplicate this mask. I will call it mask legs and I will source the mask leg vertex group. And I will do the same for the torso. Since the weapon of the character are separated object, I don't need to use a mask modifier. We will directly drive their visibility through the outliner. I will now select my rig and press tab to enter edit mode. I will press shift A to add a new bone. I will scale it down. This bone is going to be our visibility bone where we will add our visibility triggers. I will quickly give it a custom shape. If you want to know everything about creating custom shapes for your rig, check out my existing video. With my visibility bone selected, it's very important to be in pose mode so that you can access them and keyframe their values during your animations. At the very end of the bone properties, I will find the custom properties tab and I will click add custom property. I will then click the edit properties button and I will call it mask arms. By default, it will create you a custom property with a floating value which is not ideal to create a simple switch. So I will click the edit button and in the properties value and default value, I will set a value of zero. Since I'm using an integer number without decimals and the custom property value range goes from zero to one, I will only be able to switch between zero and one for this custom property. I will click OK and then I will right click on the properties value and choose copy data path. So now we have the path to this custom property value and we can use it to trigger the visibility of the mask. So I will press Ctrl tab to switch back to object mode, select my character, go into the modifiers, right click on the first mask viewport properties and add a driver. This driver will be very simple. I will switch to average value. In the source, I will switch from transform to single property. Then I have to search for my Trident armature, which is holding the property. And now Blender is looking for the data path and I can press Ctrl V to paste the data path we have sourced before. If I now select back my rig, press Ctrl tab to go in pose mode, I will find in the properties the current property. And if I switch between zero and one, I will trigger the visibility of the modifier. I can then repeat the process for the other part of the character. I can create a new custom property called mask legs. Make sure that the values used are integer, copy the data path and then add a new driver to the viewport visibility of the mask. If your driver doesn't work, you may have to click update dependencies. With this new driver selected, I can now go back onto the armature in pose mode, select the visibility bone, and in its properties, I now have a mask legs trigger. Creating the mask for the weapons is going to be almost similar. We need to create a custom property as we did before with integers value, give it a relevant name and copy the data path. The only difference is that we won't be triggering a mask modifier, but directly the viewport visibility of our object in the outliner. So I will right click the viewport visibility button and add, and add a driver. I will do the exact same thing as we did before on the mask modifier. Sourcing the rig, pasting the data path of the custom property, and now it does work. The only thing I need to do is to copy this driver on the renderable option of this object. So I will right click on the viewport display option and copy the driver. Then I will right click on the renderable option and paste the driver. Now they have the same driver and as I trigger the sword visibility custom property, it does toggle both visibility option. This way, if I mask the weapon, it won't appear in the viewport nor in the render. This is the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.